<laughs> okay, now toss them around. <laughs> Throw them at Dana. <laughs> no. Throw them to one another. Wake up that inner child in you, that six-year-old, that's always alive, alert, and well inside of you. The one that always is curious and always wants George. to have some more fun. Okay, now wait. If you have a ball, hold it. Grab a ball. If you get a ball, okay. hold it. I want you to look around. And if you see someone that looks like they're not yet having fun, throw the ball to them. That's right. If they look like they're not having fun, throw them the ball. Don't worry, you can't hurt them, not with these balls. Okay, now, you got a ball, hold it. Hold it. Now here's what I want you to do. On the count of three, I want you to throw the ball back to me. One, two, three! <laughs> We have just demonstrated a spiritual principle. What spiritual principle do you think we demonstrated? Life's a ball. That's one. God Life is a ball. God is a baseball fan. What you send out comes back. What I give, I receive. What you give, you receive. To give is to receive. This is the law of love. And yes, we also demonstrated another spiritual law. That throwing a ball around is a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> Don't trip. I think they're mostly up here. To give is to receive. This is the law of love. What do we know about the law of love? Under this law it says, whenever we give our love away to another we gain. And whatever we give, we receive. Is that true? Yes. Whenever we give our love to another, we gain. And whatever we give, we simultaneously receive. How many of you know who Mr. Spock is? Raise your hand if you know who Mr. Spock is. Not Dr. Spock, Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock, in the world of Star Trek, is a Vulcan. Actually, he's half Vulcan, half human. And Vulcans are logical. They are always logical. So what do you think Mr. Spock would have to say about the law of love. Highly illogical. Whatever you give. <laughs> Watch it, number two. <laughs> Whatever you give, you receive. You're Clearly right. illogical. You're right. If you give something away, we no longer have it. That's not logical. Whatever you give, you simultaneously receive. That's not logical either. But whoever said that love, that God, is logical? The law of love is based on abundance. It is the prosperity principle of all prosperity principles. It holds that we are filled with love all the time, and our supply is always completely filled up and running over. Those last words I spoke, those are the words from Gerald Jampolsky, 
from love is letting go of fear. But some of us may have a memory of having heard those words somewhere before. In Luke 6.37, in Jesus' instructions to his disciples, he says, give, and it will be given to you. You might think, okay, well, how much? How much will be given? He goes on, he says, a good measure, a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you give back. Is it really measure for measure? When you give your love to another, how much do you get back? <coughs> more. Always more. Isn't that your experience? When you give your love freely to another, you always receive more than what you felt you gave. If you've heard this passage before, that I just read from Luke 6.37, you might have wondered, why did Jesus use these words? Why did he talk about a good measure? Why did he say, press down, shaken together, running over, put into your lap? He was drawing upon current imagery. He was drawing upon the everyday occurrence of the marketplace where people went each day to buy their grain to make their bread. And the buyer, the buyer, she knew that she was getting a good measure when the grain was pressed down and shaken to remove any of the air pockets. And then it was filled again until it was running over. She knew she was getting her money. How much space is left in the container when it's pressed down, shaken together, and filled again until it's running over? How much space is left? None. How much space does love fill? All of it. Everywhere. There is no longer space for anything else when unconditional love is given. What about the lap? Anybody ever wonder why you should put it in your lap? I love these questions, maybe just me. <laughs> when you go to the ancient Greek, lap literally means the bosom, the chest, and the fold in a garment. And he was drawing upon the common practice of extending one's robe to be filled with grain. Imagine that now that you're wearing a robe, and you're holding it out, and it's being filled with grain. That's your good measure, right here. How much closer could it be than to your, your gut and your heart? The image serves both the stomach, we need to be fed, and the heart, we need to love. He expressed so much in a simple word. Put into your lap the good measure. Our proposition of universal truth is that when we give love, we receive love. So let's test this proposition a little bit more. I love you. If <laughs> How's that feel? There's a condition. So you're 
you're not so happy with that. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. All right, let me try something else. Um, I love you. When? How's that one? D, D, not so much. There is no if and when in unconditional love. There is only yes and now. There is only yes and now in unconditional love. It's when, the, it's when we give our love unconditionally, and I like this part, with no expectation of return. Let me say that again. When we give our love unconditionally, with no expectation of return, that's, when you love like that, that's when you feel your true power. That's when you have the full body sensation of the breadth and the depth of the love that you are. That's when you know. That's when you feel your divinity. When you give your love fully, unconditionally, with no expectation. 